Well, amen. Well, I'm excited to start a series for this month. Uh, that this we're going to be traveling through the the last week of Jesus's life. Uh, this month we we're going to take all month to go through it. And uh, if you if you looked in the book of uh, John, you'll find that from chapter number twelve. To the very end of the chapter, well, uh, backing up to uh, before the resurrection, so the, you could probably wait till the uh, the the last chapter. Uh, so, all those chapters, uh, from chapter number twelve to about chapter number twenty-seven or twenty, uh, there give you uh, the last week, the last week. So there's a lot that is covered in that last week. And we're going to be looking at that throughout this month. And uh, I'll, I'll be preaching four sermons. Uh, I won't be here on the 24th. Brother Johnny will be preaching that, that Sunday. But every Sunday we'll be looking at one aspect concerning the last week of his life. And uh, what a tremendous, tremendous study it is as we go through this. But I want you to realize that, the, that this is one of the events, not every event in, in the Word of God that takes place is mentioned in all four Gospels. But this is one event that is mentioned and that we'll start off with this morning in all four Gospels. And that is uh, the, the, um, uh, the entering into Jerusalem. When he is declared to, to be the king. Hosanna in the highest they shout and sing. Now this is the declaration. The final declaration of the Lord Jesus Christ here on earth. And uh, as we look into these verses. I want to invite you to turn in your Bibles to John chapter number 12. And we'll look starting in verse number 12. And I'll read these verses. It says, On the next day, much people that were come to the feast were there, heard that Jesus was come to Jerusalem, taking branches of palm uh, trees, and went forth to meet him, and cried, Hosanna, blessed is the king of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. And Jesus, when he had found a a young ass set thereon, as it is written, Fear not, daughters of Zion, behold, thy king cometh sitting on an, an ass colt. There uh, the, uh, these things understood not the disciples at, at the first. But when Jesus was glorified, then remembered the, and they that these things were written of him. And that he had, that they had done these things unto him. The people, therefore, that that was with him, when he called Lazarus out of the grave, out of the grave, and wrote, and, <clears throat> and risen him from the dead, bore record. For this cause, the people also met him, for that they heard that he had done this miracle. The Pharisees therefore said among themselves, Perceive ye not, ye prevail nothing. Behold, the world is gone out after him. And they were certain Greeks among them that came up to worship at the feast. And the same came before to Philip, which was at Bethsaida of Galilee, and desired him, saying, Sir, we would see Jesus. And Philip came and told Andrew, and Andrew told Philip, uh, and, uh, I'm sorry, and again, Andrew and Philip told Jesus, Let's pray. Father, I do thank you for your word. And Lord, I pray, God, that you'll help us as we look into these verses. And Lord, as we start this journey, Lord, I pray that you'd open our eyes. And Lord, that this day, these, these weeks, this week would become so clear to us as we journey through the Word of God. And Lord, I pray that you would 
that you would just stir our hearts to see the things that take place. And Lord, the devotion and the dedication and the rebellion that is there amongst. And Lord, I pray that you would help us to search our lives and see how we are before thee tonight or today. And Lord, we'll praise you for with what you what you accomplish. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I want you to realize that we're at the peak of Jesus' uh, popula- uh, popularity. If you'll remember back in chapter number 6 of the book of John, uh, Jesus fed the 5,000. And there the, at the feeding of the 5,000, Jesus had taken and uh, the multitude, because of the great miracle that he performed, wanted to take him by force and make him king. They wanted to take him and raise him up as king, but Jesus would not because, he, <coughs> because his time was not yet. His time was not yet come. And, the, and we're now have come to the place and his ministry has, uh, has, has went on and he has come to the place where, where he had raised Lazarus from the dead. Probably the greatest known miracle that that Jesus did uh, in the midst of the people that that they come to see, and it is time of Passover. It is at the time of Passover. Jerusalem is already starting to uh, bring in swarms of people from all around into the city there because of the time of Passover is at hand. So the the popularity is peaked. The, the, the people that, that are in surrounding areas are coming in. And it is a, it is a, a, a time uh, where, where things are just happening uh, really quickly. And Jesus is coming into Jerusalem. And, and the image of a king. Now I want you to realize that. That uh, chapter number two starts out on Saturday. On Saturday. And if you look in verse number two, you'll find that in verse number two, there's a great supper that is taking place. It says, in, in, uh, there they made him a supper. And where was there? Well, this was in the house of, of Martha and Mary and Lazarus, where they were at. And they were sitting around the table there. Now, this is, this is a, a compliment to Mary that, that uh, the Bible gives. But it says that Mary served. And you'll notice that everywhere you see Mary, usually she's serving. She is a servant. And there's one time where uh, you hear a lot of sermons where they are preached against Mary because of the fact that Mary ser- I mean, Martha served and Mary she sat at Jesus' feet. So they, they, they'll, they'll put down Martha for serving and Mary for sitting. Amen? But uh, I want to be honest with you. The church is not ever going to work if we don't have servants. Amen? Amen? And, the, and the truth is we're called. Every, every believer is called to serve one another. We're, we're called to do that. So, so the Bible here gives us in chapter number and verse number two, it gives us a great dedication to, to Martha because she served. Now, I want you to understand what's taking place also is that Martha's not just serving Jesus. He's not just serving Jesus and 12 disciples. There, there's a multitude of people that had come to her house and to, to be a part of this, this supper. Why? Because Lazarus had been raised from the dead. Now, if we'll read on in these verses, we'll find out that, that uh, Lazarus was the main attraction. That they didn't come just because Jesus was there. They came to see one that was risen from the dead. One that had been risen from the dead. They, 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 have, they had come to the place where I've got to see this. Now, I'll just be honest with you, if, if, if you heard of a church or you heard of a party that was going on and, the, and someone that you knew was dead was going to be there, wouldn't you just have to see it to make sure that it was true? Well, that's what they were. 
They wanted to see this great miracle that had taken place. But I want you to notice that not only in this time is there this great outlook of, uh, of the miracle that has taken place where Jesus had, had done with Lazarus, but there's a, there's a beautiful picture or a beautiful thing that takes place of a love expression. And the Bible tells us in verse number 3, it says, Then took Mary a pound of ointment of of a uh, very costly ointment and broke it and 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 uh and anointed his feet and it says that 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 he she anointed his feet with this ointment and then took her hair and wiped his feet what a beautiful beautiful picture this is now i want you to see this because this, this ointment was of such a cost that it would take a, a year's labor to buy it. A year's labor to buy it. And her, 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 her actions are that by which shows forth her love. Because when she breaks it, she lets her hair down. Can I tell you, that was something that was forbidden in the midst of men. But she lets her hair down to, to show forth her love and wipes his feet with her hair. And it says that the aroma of this, of, this, of this ointment floods the house. That all through the house, all you can smell is that. What a beautiful love picture this is. As as she gives the, the most valuable thing that she has in the most humble way. Can I tell you that if, our, if we could take our lives and give, give our lives in a, hum, a humble way like this to the Lord. But also, not only do we see a love picture that is there, we also see a deceitful deceiver. The very, it says in verse number 4, it says, Then said one of the disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which would betray him. It recognizes him as the betrayer. In verse number 5, it's the, the, as soon as he sees the, the expense of what uh, is being done, he says in verse number 5, Why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? Boy, he must be really concerned about the poor, don't you think? No, he wasn't concerned about the poor. Not at all. He was just wanting that money to be in his money bag. He got to carry around the money. Can I tell you something? Listen to me. When our money becomes more valuable than the Lord, we're in a bad place. Amen. Oh, he wanted to make it think, seem like that he was worried about the poor, but truly, his desire was for self. But Jesus, Jesus rebuked him sharply. In verse number 7, it says, Let her alone. Against the day of my burial has she kept this. In fact, what he was saying is, She is anointing me for burial. This, this ointment that was, that was used was used at the, at the burying of people to, to keep down the smell. Of the body. And here this. Love's action. Would not be denied. If you look down. In verse number 9. You can see the condition of the people. The condition of those that were there. It says in verse number 9. It says. 
much people of the Jews therefore knew that he was there. That's Jesus. And they came not for Jesus' sake, but that they might see Lazarus also, whom he raised from the dead. Their desire was not to see Jesus, but to see Lazarus. Can I tell you, they, 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 they desired what he had, but they didn't desire him. They desired, they desired what he was doing, but they didn't want nothing to do with him. Can I tell you, there's a lot of people today that's like that in, in the church. They, they desire salvation because they don't want to die and go to hell, but I don't really want to go to heaven and live like you know, righteous. I don't, want to, I don't want to set apart my life and, and not enjoy this world and sin, and, but I, I, I want what he has. Can I tell you that it, it never works like that? It never works like that at all. The plot of the rulers takes place in verse number 10. It said, But the chief priests cons uh, consulted that they might put Lazarus to death also, or also to death. That they might put Lazarus also to death. They. they they, they needed, their, their desire was to get rid of Jesus already, but now they needed to get rid of Lazarus also because he was proof that Jesus was who he said he was. Now, this is on Saturday. And we're coming into that pivotal point. The crowd has grown greatly because of the fact of this great miracle of Lazarus. We see that not only the love or, or the uh, curiosity of people have grown and the, the love of, of those who, who know who He is has grown and they're really coming towards Him. But there's also that, um, that, that, that deception that of we must do something with Him. And it says in verse number 11, Because that by reason of Him, many of the Jews went away and believed on Jesus. The Pharisees and scribes, they had to do something because many were being churned in this. Now, I made mention of the feeding of the 5,000. It was the time of the, of the exact pinnacle of his ministry. And in this time period, they wanted to make him king. But I want you to notice that, that things have changed. They're no longer looking to make him king. They're looking to kill him. And that was a change that took place throughout John. In John chapter 8, verse number twenty. Uh, and when he was at the temple, they, they went to hold, uh, lay hands on him to, to, to put him to death. And John, but he passed through them. In John chapter number 8 and verse number 59, they took up stones to stone him. And he passed through them. In John chapter number 7, they, they sought to take him again and to lay hands on him. And yet they could not, because his hour was not yet come. In John chapter number eight and verse number twenty, uh, they uh, he went into the he went in and spoke in the treasury, and they went they in the temple there, and they they looked to lay hands on him again, and they could not. But here, in John chapter twelve, verse number twenty three, his hour has come. His hour had not yet come in all those other times, but now His hour has come. And we see the presentation of the King. Now I want you to get the picture because in verse number 13, it says, they took branches of, of palm trees and went forth to meet Him and cried, Hosanna! Blessed be the King of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. 
Now there's two crowds there. He is coming from Bethsaida there uh, uh, down to Jerusalem, and, and there's a crowd following him that's come from the, the, the feast that had been on Saturday, and they're probably the ones that are, are there, and they've, they've been crying uh, or are crowning him king, and as they're following and they're getting close to Jerusalem, they see this big crowd coming in, and this other crowd is saying, what's going on here? What's going on? And they're telling him, this is Jesus who raised Lazarus, from the dead. And they start shouting. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Verse number 17 said. The people there. For. That were with him. When he lay. When he called Lazarus out of the grave. And risen and wrote and, and raised him from the dead, bore record. For this cause the people also met him, for that they heard that he had done this miracle. Oh what a what a mighty outpouring of praise of adoration of who he is. The king's here. Hosanna in the highest. Could you imagine the disciples in this very moment as they were hearing this take place, they were in their minds, they had to be thinking, the kingdom's come. We're going to set it up right now. We're going to, we're going to be able to rule. We're going to, all of us are going to get seats around the throne. We're going to be lifted up. Israel's going to be uh, united. They're going to be revived. They're going to be taken out of, out of the hands of the Romans. I mean, could you imagine what is taking place? I mean, we're not talking a few people here. I mean, we're talking... Hundreds of thousands of people that are doing this. And it says in verse number 14 that he, he found a, a young ass and sat there on and rode in. This is a revelation of, of the entering of a king. The king that would take place He had told two of his disciples to go and they, they would be an uh, uh, ass in his coat that is tied to, to ask to borrow it. And they did and they brought it in and, and he sat upon that young colt as the mother of that colt was beside him and he rolled in just like that. And this is a large crowd some of the, the commentators that I read and some of the historians that I read said that this, this crowd that would have been there at this time that would have been singing and shouting this would have been uh, up to 2 million people in this little town of Jerusalem. And in the midst of the crowd would have been circling through the voices of them that were there. This is the one that, lay, that raised Lazarus from the dead. This is the king. And as he rides in on this colt, he rides in as a king that is coming not to make war, but to make peace. Not to kill but he really came to die. They hailed him as the conquering hero, shouting, Hosanna! Hosanna! The king. He was their savior. He was going to rescue them from the, the Romans that were there, they were oppressing them. He was their deliverer. He was going to set up the kingdom once again. He was, they noted Him as the Messiah when they said, Hosanna. They noted who He was. For this is the one that had the power over death. 
This is the one that fed the multitude that would give us free food. This would be the one that would liberate the oppression of the people of Israel. Oh, this was the mindset of the people on this day. But can I tell you, there's something else that's seen in these verses. We see the prophecy that is fulfilled. Prophecy that is fulfilled at this very time. John chapter number 12, verse number 13 and verse number 14 are are pictures that that are given to us in Zechariah chapter number 9. In verse number 9 it said, Rejoice! Greatly, O daughter of Zion, shout, O daughter of Jerusalem, behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation, lowly he rideth upon the ass and upon a a colt of the fold of an ass. Oh, he, he fulfills prophecy as he comes in. In the latter part of verse number 13, it says, Blessed is he that cometh, uh, blessed is the king of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. This right here is Psalms 18, uh, 118, verse number 26. It says, Blessed be he that cometh in the name of the Lord. We have blessed you out of the house of the Lord. This is the conquering song. This is the, the, the last final song of the Hallel there that, that they sung. They sang this song in the fulfillment of Zechariah 9.9. 9. Not only that, but by way of calculation from the, par- of the prophecy of Daniel chapter 9. In Daniel chapter 9 in verse, num- in verse number 24 to verse number 27, Daniel says this event the coming event of the Messiah in the, the, the official scene would occur 69 times 7 years. This is the 69th week of years. So, if you take 69 times 7, that's 483 years. So Daniel says, it will be, 400, it will be four, 483 years from the declaration of Xerxes uh, 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 to rebuild Jerusalem. The decree, is four, the decree is, uh, was in 445. And the decree, the decree was to, to free Jeru, uh, the Jews from the Babylonian captivity and to, to give them the ability to go back to rebuild the city there in their nation. Now, 483 years from, from that declaration calculates down to the ninth of Nisan of A.D. 30. If you do all the calculations, we know exactly to this day, it was the exact to the 483 years of the the decree of Artaxerxes. Exactly on its calculations. So can I tell you this right here? That when he comes into Jerusalem that day, it is not just any day. It is the day. It is the very same day that Daniel had appointed in the Old Testament that it would take place 483 years to the date. Prophecy being fulfilled before their very eyes. He rode in on a colt. The crowd shouted, Hosanna in the highest. The king is come. And the very day that was declared in the very 
amount of years that were declared at his presentation of this calculation was fulfilled. What a wonderful picture. What a wonderful thing has taken place. Now, that we can get a full understanding of this, we really need to go back to Luke chapter 19. In Luke chapter 19, in verse number 37, we see and it says and when he was come nigh even in now even now at the descent of the mount of olives the whole multitude of the, of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen. Now these are those who were in Bethany. With him at the supper. These were those that, that, that probably were there. That as he was entering in. That, that started the, uh, the, the great chant of, of, of uh, Hosanna. And then verse number 38 says. Blessed be the king that cometh in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. This is Masonic. This, this, is, this is, the, is, 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 is looking for the Messiah. This, these are things that he is, uh, are being said that are revealing this is the Messiah. This is the Messiah. And some of the Pharisees from among, in verse number 39, and some of the Pharisees from among the multitude said unto him, Master, rebuke thy disciples. They, they wanted them to stop. You, you need to tell them to stop doing this. Why? Because he was declaring to be the promise of God. And Jesus replied to them and said, I tell you, that if, if these shall hold their peace, the stones shall immediately cry out. He said, listen, if they don't do it, these stones are going to do it. And when he, he was come nigh, he beheld the city and wept over it. Now was he just caught up in the moment of what was taking place? Was he caught up in all the excitement of, of, uh, of, of, of them wanting him to be king? Was he, was he caught up in the rejoicing that, that, that this is taking place? No, that was not it. Look what it says. In verse number 42. He says to them, If thou hast known even thou at, at last in this thy day, the things which behold uh, belong unto thy peace. He's saying to them, if you only knew the peace, the temporal and eternal peace that is available to you right now. But listen to what he says. But that but but now they are hidden from thine eyes. What a terrible, terrible statement. They had brought him in and, and they, were, they were shouting Hosanna to him. They were calling him king. And he was saying, you can't even see what's taking place. Can I tell you, there's many times we, that we live in this world and we go to church and we listen to the Word of God and we can't even see what God's doing. He says, you can't even see what's taking place. This was a judicial judgment of God upon an unbelieving nation. He said, you won't believe. Now you can't believe. Can I tell you this right here? Listen, I want you to, I want you to listen to me real good. Israel had a chance to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. But there came a time... When Israel could not eat, and they would, it was nothing Israel could ever do to be able to believe. 
They couldn't. God had, had, had made it to a place where, where they could not see. Can I tell you, there's a place, I believe, for, for every person that comes in contact with the Word of God to believe. And if they don't believe, God can make it where they'll never believe. That's why when we come and we hear the Word of God, and the Bible says today is the day of salvation. It's not that I'm not ready yet, I'll do it when I get ready. Can I tell you? For Israel, that day can never be because they passed the readiness. Oh, that we'll always be tender to accept and be ready to do the will of God. Verse number 43 says, For the day shall come unto thee, thine enemies shall cast a trench about thee. This is the siege that took place in 70 A.D. Forty years later. And can pass around thee and keep thee in, on every side. And that's exactly what the Romans did. In verse number 44. And shall lay even, uh, thee even with the ground. And thy children with thee. And they shall not leave in the one stone upon another. And can I tell you. They literally tore every stone down. Of the wall. Around Jerusalem. Because thou knowest not. The time of thy visitation. The Romans were not the judge. Of Israel. Can I tell you. God was judging Israel. By the Romans. And he, it says that he went into the temple and casted out those that sold there. This was a fickle crowd that, the, that, that he was amongst. In the midst of, of these, this picture, this is, this is one picture. This isn't two separate times. He's coming into Jerusalem and, and there's people there that really believe in him and then there's people that only want his miracles and there's people that want to kill him. And they're all right there together. And, and the multitude of them are shouting, Hosanna! Here cometh the King in the name of the Lord. And the Lord looks at them. And He sees through the multitude and sees their fickleness. Because only six days later, they're saying, crucify Him. Crucify Him. These same people said, how could somebody's heart change that fast? I don't know, but you know what? I see people come into church and boy, they're on fire for God. And then a few months later, you can't even find them. Wonder how their heart changed so quickly. See somebody that's in love with the Lord, faithful to church, and they have a problem coming in their life, they have difficulty coming in their life, and they're no longer there. They blame God, so they're not going to be around. Wonder how their minds could change so quickly. Well, there was nobody that looked at Jesus coming into the city that day thinking that He was there to overthrow because He had no army with Him. It was just a multitude that was around him shouting and calling him king. The soldiers, the Roman soldiers that were there, they weren't threatened by him at all. He came that day as one humble in humility riding on the colt of an ass. Historians tell us that the victors come in and they, they ride on a white horse. Can I tell you in Revelation chapter number 19, verse number 11, he's coming that way. It says, And I saw the heavens open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness he shall judge and make war. 
the time of His coming in peace to die was now. The next time He comes, He'll come ready to do battle. So we see the final presentation. This is the last time that He is brought out and mentioned except for when he stands before Pilate that he's king. It's also interesting if you ever have a chance to study this, why Pilate wrote this on his, on his uh, cross, King of the Jews. He didn't write, he claimed to be the king of the Jews. He wrote that he was the king of the Jews. All this presentation that is before us. He's king. The prophecy was fulfilled. The question is, what part of the crowd are you in today? Can I tell you, people are fickle. We can be up one moment and down the next. We can, be, we can like somebody one moment and, and despise them the next. Are you fickle in your relationship with Him? Can I tell you, that we'll see that, that these people right here, they were up and down, in and out, to the very end of the place where they demanded a murderer. To go free. I mean does it take a miracle. To, for, for you to become interested. In the, in the things of God. Does it take. Listen does it take. Does it take having. Uh, uh, a, a show put on for you. To get you excited about the things of God. Does something, somebody have to promise you prosperity or, 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 or some kind of uh, fulfillment of this life for you to get excited about God? Can I tell you, it's going on today. If you don't have those things, then I, I'm just not getting anything out of church. The words being preached, words being proclaimed, words being expounded. But you're not exciting enough for me. Oh, my friends. Can I tell you, I, I can almost guarantee you that every day with the disciples wasn't a pleasant day. I can almost guarantee you that every day that the disciples walked with Jesus, just because they walked beside the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, wasn't a day of luxury and comfort. Oh, there was confusions. There was, there was, there was trials and tribulations. I mean, Simon Peter, boy, he, he was a mess. In and out, up and down. Thank the Lord he finally got it straight, right? Oh, well, we ought to be able to see our lives and to see where we are in our relationship to when, of the king. When he came into Jerusalem that day. Are we just shouting hi, Hosanna today? You're the king today, but tomorrow it depends on what you do for me. Well, that should never be. What is your relationship like today? What is it that, that excites you? 
Can I tell you that if we cannot in our lives find excitement in the Word of God by reading the Word of God, by seeing Jesus on the pages of the Word of God, by realizing that the, the things in the Word of God being applied to our lives and seeing God work in our lives through those things of the Word of God, can I tell you, we're not ever going to find excitement in, in God. And if we find excitement in other things besides that, can I tell you our excitement is that uh, our relationship is wrong before God? Just like many of these that were there that day. When he rode in and he saw the multitude, he wept because he saw the fickleness of their relationship to, an, to who he was. Can I tell you there's many of us that have a fickle relationship with our Lord. And if we're put to the test, we'll see the trueness of who we are. Can I tell you the multitude that, that stood the day that he were to be crucified, that said, crucify him, crucify him, were there because of the fact that they would not hold him above the king that was Caesar. And they were scared and coached by the rulers. Oh, we need to realize that our relationship needs a foundation. Not in the miracle. Not that we're looking for a miracle from God. But one like Mary. Oh, out of love, she gave all that she had. A great prize. It was so great that the scoffer said, what are you doing that for? Don't you know that we could, we could do so much with this for those that were in need? But the expression of love. The compassion that she had. The love she had for him. Every time you see her. She's sitting at his feet. She's loving him. Devoted to him. Even when, she, even when he's dead in the tomb. She's the first one at the gravesite. Oh, she loved him so. Do you love him today? I mean, do you really love him? Or is your... Is your devotion to Him? Is what you have His? Or, Lord, I love you, but you know, that's, this is mine. This, oh, I've been really, I really wanted to preach a different sermon today. I wanted to, I wanted to preach on, uh, on what it means to be saved. Because what it really means is that you give all you are. All. Not a portion. Not a moment. Not a month. Not a week. Not a, not a year. Not ten years. All. To Him. That's what salvation really is. It's nothing less. Nothing less. Where are you at in this crowd? I hope you are those with a true heart. As the disciples were that day. Ready to. Sing praises to the Lord. Because he's coming. He's coming again. I, I like what Brother Wall said. I wish, I wish he'd come today. Not to earth. But I wish he'd come and. And we can meet him in the air. Amen. I'm looking forward to that day. I'm anticipating that day. All of his glorious appearance. Let's stand together. Father, I thank you for this time that we could lay the foundation of this last, of this last week of your life. Lord, to see you how it started. 
coming into Jerusalem that day. The great crowd that they sang praises to you. The condition that they truly were. How they could not see the truth of what you had come to do. Lord, I pray that you would help us. Help us to have eyes to see. Not to be blinded that we can't see, Lord. But to be, have eyes to see what our own condition is before you. In truth. In reality. Lord, that this Easter, as we approach it, Lord, that we may be drawn closer to you. And Lord, we'll praise you for what you accomplish. I love you and thank you for all that you do. Bless, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Brother Jeff, what we're going to sing. May the Lord bless you. Shake hands with one another. You're dismissed.